This message is not for the fearful, cowards, or the unbelieving. If you fall into either of those categories, stop the video now and pass it on to someone else. This is Shirley J. and Johnson, December 16th, 2023. First of all, true Christians do not worship the same God as the Jews. True Christians believe the Bible. And we worship and obey the creator of all the universes, the one true and living God. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, or the Messiah, as some say. And everyone knows that, or I should say, most people know that Jews believe in the Talmud. And they worship many different gods. They call upon at least 99 different names. They claim that the 99 names are referring to the same God. There are numerous sects of Jews, and they each have their own doctrine, and they pray to the God of their choosing. Some pray to Yahweh, some pray to Hashem, some pray to Adonai, etc., etc. Some pray to Elohim, which is plural. So they're praying to all the false gods, which are the fallen angels. And God calls the fallen angels Satan and the devil. It's a, to us, it's a double nakba. It is being done in the name of my religion of 3,000 years by a movement that's a hundred odd years, a political nationalist movement of non-religious Jews, Zionists. Judaism is to keep the Torah, to serve God, as we did for hundreds of years. To occupy, to steal, to a create a state is expressly forbidden according to my Torah. All the rabbis around the world for 130 years since Zionism started spoke up in every way, in every style that they had and declared that Zionism is sinful, is a, is a criminal and is totally unacceptable according to my religion. The Zionists use the Star of David, they use the name Israel, they use all the trappings of my religion. Mr. Weiss said that Judaism is to keep the Torah, as they have done for hundreds of years, even though he said that their religion was 3,000 years old. What we call Christianity, true Christianity, has been around since the beginning of creation. Mark chapter 1, verse 27, And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Acts chapter 17, verse 19. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is. John chapter 7, verses 16 through 17. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he is that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. See, most of the world, including most of the Israelites, had abandoned the creator of all the universes, and they had started worshiping false gods, and they had created their own new false religion. They are the ones who are living under a new doctrine. John chapter 7, verse 19. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill me? See, they weren't even keeping the law that Moses gave them. And the law that Moses gave them was handed down by the creator of all the universes. So they were not keeping the creator's laws and statutes. They had made up their own new false religion. And Jesus came to restore that old doctrine, or that old religion, which is really no religion at all. It's just a way of life in which the creator of all the universes instructed us to live. Matthew chapter 10 verse 40 He that receiveth you, speaking of the disciples, receiveth me, speaking of Jesus, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him, meaning the creator of all the universes, that sent me. So he that receiveth you, receiveth me, and he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So Jesus is telling them, if you receive Jesus and the doctrine which he brought back 
and restored to you, you are then receiving the Father. You have been reconciled. If they obey the doctrine of Jesus Christ, which is the Creator's doctrine. Now, Mr. Weiss said that Zionists use the Star of David and they use the name of Israel wrongfully because he doesn't consider them Jews. But Talmudic Jews, Torah Jews, Judaism Jews, and Zionist Jews do not worship the same God as Christians. Mr. Weiss is doing the very thing that he's accusing Zionists of doing. I have written and preached for over 25 years that the Jews are guilty of identity theft. Mr. Weiss is using the name of Israel and he's using the name of David. There is no such thing as the Star of David. Nowhere in the Torah or the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, or any other part of the Bible, does it say that David had a star or that there is a star that represents David? Explain the Torah. Five books of Moses. In, your, in the Bible. Right. Because five books. Or the law, some people say. But it's right. Torah. It means instruction. Torah is the first five books so of the Bible. Five books of Moses. In, five books of Moses in okay. our Bible. Right. Acts chapter 7, verse 43. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. It's the star of Remphan. Moloch and Remphan are intertwined. The two triangles, or the figures, which create this star of Remphan. See, the unbelieving and rebellious Israelites continue to worship the false gods of their captive nations, even after they were delivered from captivity. And they made images to represent those false gods. Just like how they made the golden calf and worshiped whichever false god that calf represented when they thought Moses wasn't coming back down. So they reverted back to what they knew and they began to worship and make images to these false gods. A true God-fearing Israelite would never be represented by the star of Remphan and Moloch. And a true Christian would never yoke themselves or stand in solidarity with someone who does. Jews use the word Hebrew as well. Israelites of the Bible are Hebrews. Jews are not Hebrew. Genesis chapter 14 verse 13 And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite brother of Eshcol and brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. Acts chapter 21, verse 40. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, and it goes on to tell what he said. Jews do not speak in the Hebrew tongue. They speak in the Yiddish tongue which is a language that they constructed using words from many different languages, such as German, uh, Russian, Egyptian, Spanish, Italian, and, 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 and any other nations in which they live. And for example, if they say, good morning, ma'am, now I'm just throwing out an example here, they might use a German word uh, to say good. For morning, they might use a Spanish word. And for ma'am, they might use an Italian word. So they have spoken German, Spanish, and Italian just to say good morning ma'am. Now that's just an example. They may not use those exact words for those, word for word. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to give you an example. So they haven't spoken Hebrew at all. They spoke a word of German, they spoke a word of Spanish, and they spoke a word of Italian. And they claim that's modern Hebrew. Not so. Not so. There's no such thing as modern Hebrew. It's just a language that they made up using other languages. And the word Jew itself is a word that they made up as well. Now I'm not going to go into depth because I've done many messages over the years, but to quickly point out the word Jew was deceptively added into the Bible. The first occurrence of the word Jew 
is in 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 6. Jews just popped up out of nowhere. All, this, all these generations, from Genesis all the way down to 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 6, all these generations of people, then all of a sudden, the Jews pop up out of nowhere. Just like they popped up out of nowhere again in 1947, claiming to be the chosen people. Well, they didn't actually pop up from nowhere in 1947. They came from some other countries, but you know what I mean. Before 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 6, the word Jew cannot be found in the Bible. The word Jew cannot be found in the Torah. So, why didn't Jews exist before 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 6? The Jews claim... They're the descendants of Judah, and that's why they call themselves Jews. But all Jews are not descended from that one man. Israel had 12 sons and one daughter, all called Israelites, not Jews. Judah was Hebrew, and his daddy Israel was Hebrew, and his daddy Isaac was Hebrew, and his daddy Abraham was Hebrew, not Jewish. The words Hebrew... Israel and Judah can be found in the Torah. But the word Jew cannot be found in the Torah. And so over the years I've done messages and I've pointed that out. So in 2006, according to Bill Cloud, the Jews now have something called the Half Torah, which includes the rest of the Old Testament. Because I pointed out that the word Jew and the name David do not appear in the Torah. Because the Jews are imposters. They are guilty of identity theft. These are not the Israelites of the Bible. So whenever you point out these discrepancies, they will try to make amends for that. So now they have something called the half Torah. And according to Bill Clout, Torah just means law. So now they have the law and the half law. Now, there are some Jews who claim to be Christians. Like Larry Huck, for instance. But how is that even possible? He would have to change his race. Because they use the word Jew and Jewish as their race and their religion. So if Larry Huck truly did see the light, if he truly did convert to Christianity, he would no longer be Jewish. He would no longer be a Jew. He would be a Christian. And Christian is not a race. So then what race would he be? See, this is just more proof that the word Jew is just a, a, a word that they made up. Jew is not a race. So what race are they really? And because they call themselves Jews, their religion is called Judaism, which is just a man-made religion, if you can call it that. So again, who are they really? What race are they really? Because they certainly are not Israelites. They are not the Israelites of the Bible. And the Jews never refer to themselves as Israelites. Because they're not from the lineage of Israel. Again, they're imposters. They're identity thieves. And before 1948, they couldn't even so much as refer to themselves as Israeli. Because that land was called Palestine. And I believe that's one of the main reasons why the Jews are fighting so aggressively to maintain control of that land. Because that's the only one thing that they can use to try to legitimize themselves as the children of Israel. And even then, they can only call themselves Israeli. See, America and Britain orchestrated this grand delusion in 1917. America and Britain are also to blame for all the evil that's taking place in Israel right today. America and Britain have a lot of blood on their hands. Now, before 1948, the Jews would have been called Palestinians, or Palestinian Jews, just like there are American Jews, German Jews, uh, Polish Jews, etc., etc. And anyone who is a citizen of Israel is an Israeli, but that doesn't mean that they are the chosen Israelite people of the Bible. 
God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. Genesis chapter 32, verse 28. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. 1 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 34. And Abraham begat Isaac. The sons of Isaac are Esau and Israel. 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 18. O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, our fathers, keep this forever in the imagination of the thoughts of the heart of thy people, and prepare their heart unto thee. God made a covenant with a person named Israel and his offspring who are called Israelites. Again, Israel had 12 sons and one daughter, and they all are not named Judah. So what happened to the other tribes? And God didn't make a covenant with a landmass called Israel. God made a covenant with a person named Israel and his offspring who are called Israelites. Again, Israel had 12 sons and one daughter, and they all were not named Judah. So what happened to the other tribes? The word rabbi is not found in the Torah either, or the half Torah, which is the rest of the Old Testament. So why do they call themselves rabbi? This is what Jesus had to say about the scribes and Pharisees. Matthew chapter 23 Verses 5 through 8. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And they love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. See, the scribes and Pharisees love to be called rabbi. But again, the word rabbi is not in the Torah. It's not in the half Torah, as they call it. It's nowhere in the Old Testament. It's only, it only appears in the New Testament, the book that they claim they don't believe in. But like I said, they, they, read, they have read this book and they don't believe in it. But they use these words, just like Mr. Weiss said, of the Zionists. They have to use these terms if they're going to to deceive, if they're going to impersonate a whole uh, race of people, you're going to have to study these people. Study how they live. Study the buzzwords. Use these buzzwords and, and pretend to be this. But we know that the book that they believe in is the Talmud. To my Jewish brothers and sisters, it is tempting to look at the present darkness and think that nothing has changed. However, things have changed. More than 40 years ago, I joined forces with an Orthodox rabbi, Rabbi Scheinberg, to bring Christians and Jews together in mutual love and respect. We stood shoulder to shoulder and we made this declaration. If a line has to be drawn, then draw that line around both Christians and Jews. We are one. And we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish people. Christians and Jews are not one. John Hagee does not speak for all Christians. And he talked about mutual love and respect between Christians and Jews. Now this was just captured on video, I think maybe about two to three months ago, I think. This clip that's coming up. Surprising report from Israel today where officials are taking seriously a recent upsurge in spitting and hitting attacks on clergy and the vandalism of Christians. In recent months, we've seen very serious phenomena towards the Christian denominations in the Holy Land. Our brothers and sisters, Christian citizens, feel attacked in their places of prayer, in their cemeteries and on the streets. Christians in Jerusalem's old city say they are often harassed spit on and even physically attacked by religious Jewish year incidents include the desecration of a Protestant cemetery on Mount Zion, an attack on international Christians during a day of prayer for Jerusalem, and harassment at a Messianic concert in Jerusalem. Recently, Israeli Channel 13 reporter Yossi Eli went undercover as a priest for a day. Dressed in a robe, he walked through the old city with Franciscan father Alberto. 
In the first five minutes, he was spat at five times by Orthodox Jewish Israelis. The news out of Jerusalem, ultra-Orthodox Jews, including children, were filmed spitting on Christian worshipers in the old city. Video shows a group of Christians leaving a church carrying a wooden cross, walking by a group of religious Jews heading in the other direction. Several of the Jews then spit on the ground and then dire in the direction of the Christians as they passed by. A border police officer was even seen walking behind them and doesn't take any action in response. If someone spits now, what do you think? It causes more harm to the Jews? When does it help? You think that someone will believe that you believe in Jesus? You don't have to demonstrate outwardly. We know by the way you look. You don't accept their religion. I understand that. They all understand that. But you don't have to spit. It is not honourable. What is hateful to you, do not do to others. This is Christianity. Judaism says not to accept them. Here they murdered. So let them die with them. Well, I'm joined now by the man in that video, Robbie Berman, a tour guide from Jerusalem. Thank you so much for being with us. Look, I want to first ask you about uh, that incident. You've clearly seen this happen in the past. This is not a new phenomenon. People from the right wing, settlers defending this as a, quote, ancient Jewish practice. Talk to us a little bit about your experience with this. Well, first of all, uh, that's, uh, that clip there at the very end, you didn't translate what he said, but he ended off by saying, I'm trying to have a conversation with the guy, and he ends off, you should die along with them. You should die along with the Christians. These are not pleasant conversations. I have uh, kids from 10 years old to adults who are 50 years old who believe they need to spit at Christians. I've seen them spit on priests. That kind of stuff has been going on for many years. Some Jews say that this is an ancient Jewish custom. And if they thought that they could get away with it, they'd be spitting on Christians right here in America, too. They would. And the Jewish man with the little cap on said they murder Christians in Israel. And he told the tour guide that he can die along with the Christians. Now, does that sound like mutual love and respect? But the following is the main reason I made this video. When I saw that video of Mr. Weiss talking about the Zionist Jews, I had to address that first. But this is really what I wanted you to hear. This is John Hagee in 2007 talking with Daniel Lappin. On my set today is Rabbi Daniel Lappin, and we're having a conversation about the controversy that exists between Mr. Foxman, who is attacking conservative Christians, trying to understand the secular humanism of 80% of America's Jews as opposed to the fact that 20% of them, according to the rabbi, are what I call Torah Jews. A Torah Jew is someone who reads the Word of God, believes the Word of God, lets that be the guide of his life and his conduct, and it makes his, it makes his uh, foundation for moral clarity. And then, as you're saying, if 80% of them are secular, uh, then 80% of them uh, have abandoned the simple teaching of the Word of God because you cannot be a secular humanist and be devoted to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The two are incompatible, obviously. Absolutely. And so in their vision, my view of Judaism and your view of Christianity are the obstacles to everything good. Mm -hmm. And the two views of America, the view of America that you and I share, and the view of America shared by secular fundamentalists, which is a religion, mm -hmm. uh, is incompatible, two completely different things. They derive their sense of spiritual value from doing everything possible to make America free from what they see as the baleful influence of faith. These facts um, are well known, that, that you and uh, many other uh, American Christian leaders provide support in intangible, powerful ways to Israel is well known. So your question about the attack that is launched currently against conservative Christianity in America, believing evangelical Christians, uh, by organizations like uh, the, Reform Juda the Reform Movement of Judaism or like the Anti-Defamation League um, is a crucial question. And in a nutshell, what you are really asking is, why does Abraham Foxman hate Christians more than he loves Jews? Um, why does Mr. Foxman 
uh, represent himself. Uh, d d is he representing himself or does he represent the mainstream of the ADL? If 80% of Jewish people are secular Jews and do not believe in the God that makes demands on your life, then he would be talking for the mainstream of the ADL? Uh, he would probably be talking for the mainstream of the ADL. He, he is a very successful leader of the organization. He's a very devoted leader. I would be astonished to hear that he is taking public positions that would be at odds with the people who support his organization. I doubt that to be the case. 80% of the Jews in America have abandoned the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. And they hate Christians more than they love Jews. More than they love themselves. Now that's a great hatred. That is a great hatred. John chapter 15 verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me. Speaking of Jesus. You know that it hated me before it hated you. See, the Jews hate Christians because they hate Jesus. There are many Jews who have already long since abandoned the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they've adopted another God, the God of the religion of secular fundamentalism. Now, they still remain ethnically and perhaps even racially, socially part of the Jewish community. They'll tell you, we're proud to be Jews. Yes. But if, a, an, if an invisible private detective would have followed 70% of the American Jewish community around for a week, he'd see no evidence of their Jewishness whatsoever. There's no observance of the Sabbath, there's no adherence to the laws of the dietary rules, nothing at all. So you've got a vast body of, of Jews who are identifiable socially and ethnically as part of the Jewish community, but whose moral and philosophical outlook is hostile to traditional biblical religion, hostile to Judaism. And these Jews, when somebody might say to them, what makes you Jewish? Do you know what their single only one answer is? No. We don't believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is all they have said. That therefore means that anything which is an expression of Christianity is almost an offense to their sense of individual identity. But do they believe in God? Uh, do they, they believe in Torah? Do they, they read it? Do they live by it? No. They, they would tell you they believe in God, but not in a God that makes any specific demands on human beings, and certainly not a God that makes any demands of Jews. Now this 70 to 80 percent of Jews that Daniel Lappin is talking about are called Zionists. They are secular fundamentalists, according to uh, Mr. Lappin. They don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the creator of all the universes. They don't believe in the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And according to the Jerusalem Post in 2016, 90% of the Israeli Jews call themselves Zionists. And 82% of them say that the idea of Zionism is still relevant. Now I don't know what that percentage is today, but according to Daniel Lappin, they don't believe in the God of the Bible, the creator of all the universes, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Now isn't that something? And they live in Israel and are reaping the blessings big time. Think of all the billions of tax dollars America gives to Israel each and every year. I mean, Israel is basically a, a welfare nation run by godless imposters, identity thieves. See, according to Mr. Lappin, Zionists hate Christians. And the only one thing that makes them Jewish is that they don't believe in Jesus. It's not what they believe in, it's what they don't believe in or who they don't believe in that makes them Jews. That's astonishing, isn't it? They're Jews because they don't believe in Jesus. And they don't believe in any God that makes demands of Jews. Yet they claim to be the chosen people of God and reaping the blessings. So for, for those of you who are watching this telecast, and you've heard me for 25 years teach you how to interact with a Jewish community and to uh, stop 
praising the dead Jews of the past, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and walk across the street and meet your Jewish neighbor. Uh, if you go over there and it's chilly, uh, it's because they are secular humanists and they do not believe what you believe. Zionists are secular humanists and secular fundamentalists. Eighty percent of American Jews do not believe what Christians believe. And the vast majority, 90% of Israeli Jews, the ones who are governing Israel, they do not believe what Christians believe. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? They don't believe what Christians believe. They are unbelievers. There's no such thing as Judeo-Christian. Matthew chapter 12, verse 50. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. Jesus said those who do the will of his Father are his sisters and brothers. And Zionists don't believe in the Father or the Son. And it's not like the Jews are deceiving the Christians in this respect because they tell Christians straightforwardly, we don't believe in Jesus. It's the Christians who are deceiving themselves. If anyone were to offer the mainstream uh, American Jewish community the following deal, eternal safety, tranquility, security, and prosperity for the state of Israel, in exchange for which, America becomes more, more adoptive of Judeo-Christian principles in issues of homosexuality, abortion, prayer in public schools. The bulk of America's Jewish community would say, thanks, but no deal. Unbelievable. Unbelievable it is. The bulk of the Jewish communities in America, meaning that 80% who are Zionist Jews, that's the bulk of the American Jews, would say no deal to peace, tranquility, and prosperity for the land. The land that they're fighting so aggressively to maintain as their homeland. <laughs> Unbelievable. John chapter 3 verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. See, they don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, yet they're fighting to have their own nation called Israel. See, because they need that land to maintain the illusion of being the Israelites of the Bible. And even then, they can only claim to be Israelis, which, like I said earlier, it doesn't mean that they're the true Israelites of the Bible because anyone who is a citizen of that nation is called an Israeli. And they don't believe that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah. 1 John chapter 2 verse 22 Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. See, Zionists are Antichrist. And Mr. Lappin and Mr. Weiss and other Torah Jews and Judaism Jews are Antichrist as well because they only believe in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, what they call the Torah. And now, according to Bill Cloud in 2006, the Jews adopted something called the Half Torah, where they claim to believe in the prophets and the rest of the Old Testament. But they still don't believe in Jesus. So that still makes them Antichrist. If the world could agree on this one issue, there would be world peace instantly. You can be religious and be lost. You can pray until you faint from exhaustion, but if you don't pray in the name of Jesus, God is not listening. There is a right way and a wrong way to pray. Hagee said that if you don't pray in the name of Jesus, God is not listening then God is not hearing Zionist Jews, and God is not hearing Torah Jews, and God is not hearing Judaism Jews, and God is not hearing any other sect of Jews if they don't pray in Jesus' name. 
And obviously they don't because they don't believe in Jesus. Israel is not merely a state. When millions of Zionists mention Israel, they don't just mean the only freedom-loving democracy. Israel is this and more. And we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish people. ...and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Many Bible scholars say they believe that scripture is referring to Zionist Jews. 80% of American Jews, and in 2016, 90% of Israeli Jews were Zionist Jews, according to the Jerusalem Post. So 80% of Jews in America and 90% of Jews in Israel are the synagogue of Satan, according to many Bible scholars. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. In Hebrew, when you have the Torah, is simply the, the divine intervention of how we walk on the earth. Jews are master teachers of how to walk on the earth. They own 97% of the assets in America are owned by 3% of the people called Jews. It's not because they have the great DNA and RNA. It's simply they have the standard operating procedure for life called the Torah. I am a picture of the house of Judah, the Jewish people. Clearly, the Bible was not speaking to the people who call themselves Jews because they are not impoverished. Jews are the wealthiest people in America. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit if it turned out that Jews own the bulk of the wealth in every other nation in which they live uh, as well. Revelation chapter 3 verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. And the word Jew should be correctly translated Hebrew. Even though the Jews don't just outright call themselves Hebrew, uh, they claim to speak Hebrew. They claim to have a Hebrew university, and they have a Hebrew national, I guess, food chain. So they're insinuating uh, that they are Hebrew. They want the world to believe that they are Hebrew, even though they don't just outright say they're Hebrew, just like they don't outright say they are Israelites. They want the world to believe that's who they are. So that word should be correctly translated Hebrew, but the Bible makes no distinction between Zionist Jews, Torah Jews, Judaism Jews, Ashkenazi Jews, Orthodox Jews, or any other type of Jews. The Bible simply says, those who say they are Jews, period, and are not, they're lying. They are the synagogue of Satan. But let's, let's, let's just say, okay, the Bible is referring to only Zionist Jews when it speaks of the synagogue of Satan. Still, how can a true Christian stand in solidarity with Zionist Jews? And some of these so-called Christians are even referring to themselves as Zionists. Amos chapter 3 verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And in closing, President Biden says that he's a Zionist and a Roman Catholic. And he's also a Democrat. Now, the Republicans claim to be so against abortion, homosexuality, transgenderism, and all the other stuff that Zionists and Democrats are all for and fighting to legalize. Yet you have many of these same Republican evangelicals and charismatics standing in solidarity with Zionists. As I have always preached, there's no difference between a Republican and a Democrat. They're working toward the same end to usher in the Antichrist. And you hear many evangelicals and charismatics preach all the time about how they hate religion. To hell with religion, they say. And they don't want rules, and they don't have to be circumcised. They don't have to be baptized. They can dress however they want to dress. Jesus died to give them a sin pass. All sorts of heresy. See, they don't believe in a God that makes demands of them either. That's why they're trying so hard to usher in this the main, the big, the main Antichrist. Lucifer. 
And you'll see many of them flash satanic hand signals right in the pulpit while they're preaching to let you know who they really believe in. But Daniel Lappin told us that Zionist Jews, or Zionists, period then, hate Christians more than they love Jews. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Do not stand in solidarity with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 